Hi, everybody. It's Kim from Patriot Garden. And yes, I am drinking hot coffee on a scorcher of a day. It was supposed to be cooler today, and I know rain is coming. I want to get this video done while it is not too, too bad outside. Today, we're going to talk about taking care of your chickens in the summertime. Some of the needs stay the same, uh, and some of the needs change in the summertime. So we're going to go over what to do in their living space to keep them healthy, what foods to give them and what foods not to give them, and also how to maintain their health and keep things on hand so that if something goes wrong, you're ready. So let's start with the coop. I keep my coop plastic wrapped in the wintertime just to offer a little bit of warmth. I don't use supplemental heat and chickens are actually better in the summertime than they are in the wintertime. Their bodies can handle the cool weather more than they can handle the hot weather. So there's a little bit more to worry about and think about in the summertime. First thing I do is I remove the plastic. The next thing I do is make sure that all of the old bedding from the winter is taken out and I start with a clean coop and clean laying boxes. You can see I have a laying box right there and the reason why I have one there and they also lay in the coop uh, is because my six girls don't quite get along yet and I, I was afraid to leave them when I went to work uh, all mixed up together. So I put this fence, as you can see, that separates the coop into two halves. Now the old girls have access to the coop and the laying box, so the new girls needed a place to lay, so I built them that small laying box right there. Uh, today is my first full day out of school, so I'll be able to monitor them more closely, and I might switch them so that the younger girls have access to the coop for a little while. Honestly, it's the only way I can think of to bring peace to this coop and make sure that nobody's injured. Now when I clean out the coop and I take out all the bedding, clean out all the poop from all the roosting bars, give it a good clean, I sprinkle the bottom with a product called Sweet PDZ. Now I mentioned that in my caring for chickens in winter, so I use that in winter and I also use it in summer. That's a horse stall refresher. That's a lot of words to say, but it's great for a chicken coop. It makes sure that there's no ammonia buildup in the coop, which could really cause uh, respiratory problems in your birds. Once I sprinkle with sweet PDZ, I put clean bedding down. Now, people use all different kinds of bedding. They say it's not good to use hay. I have used hay during the summer when there's a lot of ventilation in the coop. Most of the time I use straw. Some people use sand. Other people use wood chips. It really is what you have access to, but just make sure that it's clean and that there's no ammonia buildup. Those are the two most important things. And in the summer, you're going to have to clean out your coop more often. The other thing I use in the coop and in the run is diatomaceous earth, food grade diatomaceous earth. When they're kicking around in the dirt, giving themselves a dust bath, that diatomaceous earth will keep mites off their body, which I can imagine how bad mites are in the winter time, but in the summertime when their bodies are hot, having those mites all over their skin is just not gonna be a good thing. So regular application of DE, I'd say once every two weeks or so, I sprinkle the egg boxes, the run, and the coop with diatomaceous earth. So now, living conditions have to be kept clean. Use that sweet PDZ to avoid that ammonia buildup and use DE in their dust bath areas and almost everywhere where they'll sit and be to reduce the occurrence of bugs like mites that could be bothersome to them. DE is also a great dewormer. Now the chickens will peck at it. They'll also peck at the sweet PDZ, but both of them are perfectly safe for the chickens to ingest. All right, so now let's talk about food. Uh, food needs don't change. They need food and they need fresh water available to them at all times, except of course when they're sleeping. Um, now in the summertime, you're gonna have a lot of critters around too. So it's very important that the number one thing you do is you keep your food inaccessible to animals such as uh, raccoons or possums. You don't let the food stay out because bears, believe it or not, are more attracted to the food in the coop than they are to the chickens themselves. So at night, from the meat chickens and the layer chickens, I take the food in. I make sure there's no food or food scraps left in the coop or on the floor of the run. And if the food is in the containers that I use, I have one homemade um, feeder which I'll show you and one I purchased I make sure that they are secure and covered so that an animal is not attracted by that food just laying out. I keep the laying hens on a layer feed all throughout the summer just like I do in the winter uh, but there's some things that I avoid in the summer because they do raise their body temperature and that's not what we want. I don't use cayenne pepper at all. I use that a lot in the winter 
for the express purpose of raising their body temperature and keeping them warm. So I avoid cayenne pepper in the summertime. I also avoid whole dried corn that will also increase their metabolism and raise their body temperature. I do give them once a week treat of scrambled eggs with the eggshells. The eggshells give them a great source of calcium. Now, uh, some people use the crushed up oyster shells for calcium, and that's a fine thing too. It can be mixed inside their food. You can just sprinkle it on the run. You can actually put it in a separate little bowl. They will take it if they need it, and they won't take it if they don't need it. But if you notice that their eggshells are coming out a little thin, sometimes they actually are a rubbery consistency. That's a good sign that they need a boost of calcium. Layer feed is their first source of calcium. The eggshells in their weekly scrambled eggs is their next source of calcium. And uh, if there's an emergency, I will give them those crushed oyster shells. Now, my chickens are very spoiled. They get a lot of treats in the summer, especially treats that A, keep them cool, and B, give them something to do. And the best way to do that is to make ice blocks with fruit inside or corn. Now, I know I just said I don't give them whole corn, but I will give them canned corn because that's not going to raise their body temperature. That's all mushy and already processed. They're going to be able to digest that very easily without it raising their body temperature. So putting those things in a Tupperware container and making a big block of ice not only gives them a game to play during the day to peck all that great stuff out, but it also will keep them cool. Blocks of ice in their water are also a good idea to help keep their body temperature down. And the best thing my chickens love is that when we're done eating watermelon, we freeze the rinds and we throw the frozen rinds in the run or I throw them in the lawn if they're free ranging. And that's a great cool treat for them to have on a hot summer day. The chickens do get a lot of greens from the garden. I, I try to limit that, uh, but they love their carrot tops. They love beet tops. Anything that I've trimmed or pruned, they love to eat. I try to limit what they get because it tends to make their poop a little runny when they eat a lot of greens. But that whole circle of chickens eating your scraps and then pooping out your compost is a wonderful step towards self-sustainability. When we talked about the coop, it was about keeping them healthy, right? Keeping the coop clean, keeping it uh, ventilated, making sure that there's no ammonia buildup. But there's things that you can put in their food to keep them healthy as well. I take away the cayenne pepper, but I do use a lot of dried oregano, dried thyme, and garlic in their food. Those are natural antibacterial foods. They boost their immunity, and they also are natural dewormers, along with the DE that they peck at uh, in their coop and in their run. I'll put dried versions of those in their food. When I prune my oregano and thyme plants, I just throw sprigs of them into their water so that it infuses their water. There are some things that you should always keep on hand for chicken's health. The number one thing I keep is Epsom salts. Epsom salts have a lot of uses, even if it's just to give a nice warm soak to a dirty chicken, one that's got poop encrusted on their bottoms. You, you never want that to build up. It blocks their vent. Uh, that issue could kill a chicken very, very quickly. We want those fluffy butt Friday pictures. We want their butts to stay nice and clean and fluffy at all times. And an Epsom salt soak, if they've got some poop stuck to their bottom, is a great thing. Epsom salts are also great if you find you have an egg-bound chicken. Soaking a chicken every hour who's egg-bound in Epsom salts and warm water will help that chicken pass that egg a little bit easier. When the chickens are free-ranging, especially in the summer, they do a lot of hopping and jumping into the garden, onto the garden, into structures, and there's just more of a chance they're going to hurt themselves, injure themselves, or cut their skin. Just want to have on hand what you would do for anybody, which is some way to clean the wound and some way to bandage the wound. I also keep VetRx on hand all year long, and VetRx is almost an essential oil mixture, and it helps if you notice your chicken does have a respiratory problem. A little bit on their beak, a couple of warm drops in their beak, and even in some water will help them. In the summertime, it's tough to tell the difference between a respiratory problem and just panting. Yes, chickens pant. So if your chicken looks healthy, is acting healthy, and they're panting, it probably is not a respiratory illness. They're probably just putting on their dog self. The number one thing to look for in chicken illness or chicken health is the color of their comb. If it's bright red and standing up tall, your chicken is healthy. If the comb changes color, if it gets pale, or if it turns purple or blue, now you have an issue that you need to deal with. And that's a whole other video. I will think about putting together a whole video on really serious things that can go wrong with your chickens. 
All in all, I think my girls are very healthy. I managed to get a very consistent amount of eggs every day. And as with anything, your plants or your chickens or your animals, you take your cue from them. You've got to constantly watch your animals to make sure that they are showing signs that they are healthy and happy. Let me show you my food containers so you see what I mean about being able to secure the food at night from raccoons and bears and other critters that are really after the food, but they will kill your chickens if they need to, so you want to be safe. Let's go take a look at the coop. It's a happy girl right here. This is one of our newbies. That's RBG, because she's wearing her lace collar. So you'll see I keep their water very clean. Now these guys don't have a top to their waterer. This is a nipple waterer. You can see the nipples underneath. Uh, but I change this daily so it stays clean. Um, and, and you can see I have some oregano and thyme floating in there for good health. I made this large batch feeder from some PVC pipe. It's got a cover and at night I just plug up the bottom so that the food is not accessible to those critters. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take that off for you. I know you're hungry. We already saw in the beginning that there are eggs in their laying box, so they really do use this because as you can see, this fence keeps them away from the coop. And these are the old gals. And they have a really cool uh, feeder and waterer. That's the waterer there. It holds two gallons of water. It does need to be cleaned often, especially the cups but it is helpful if I'm late for something to know that I can see the level of water in there and that it's at least clean. And it also comes with a feeder. Got to give those girls something to do. They love their roost bars and each group has their own little roost bar. And then I've used this very inexpensive shade. I can roll it up on days where there's not a lot of sun so that they can see what's going on. And it does offer a little measure of shade, extra shade during the day. And then of course the sunflowers and the zinnias are gonna grow up and give them even more shaded areas. So I hope this video was real helpful for you. If it was, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you to all of you who have subscribed. You're helping to get this channel off the ground. And hit that notification bell so you know when I make a new video. As always, happy gardening, everybody.